Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we are looking at industries, but not just the small ones. We're going to be looking at the big ones today. Modern railroads love to use big industries to haul uh, unit trains or large locals where they can do a lot less switching. And so today is going to be all about how you can model large industries in JMRI. As much as we love small industries like you see in these clips, these are not the focus this time. Stay tuned as we look at some options you guys have for modeling large industries. So today, when we look at large industries, we're not going to talk about large industries like you see right now that receive unit trains. While that is one easy way to model large industries, we're going to focus on large industries that receive trains of cargo in different freight cars and then have to have an industrial switcher to do the switching. That can be done by the railroad or it can be done by its own local switcher. So we are going to talk about both options today. All right, so here on the North Texas Belt Line, we are looking at the ethanol mill. We have tracks for receiving corn. We have tracks for shipping out the ethanol. We have tracks for loading out the um, dried distiller's grain that gets shipped as like a spent uh, byproduct. And then we have tracks over here for loading uh, CO2 into insulated tank cars. Now, I've said before, I do know that this doesn't actually ship by rail, but hey, it's a model road. We're gonna have some fun. So this is not gonna be the subject of our, of our video today, but I am gonna use this to discuss our first option for uh, modeling large industries. So this large industry has its own small little yard and that's because it receives a dedicated local from Kingston and Kingston yard is over here. It's not very far on the route, but that's fine because it's a model railroad. So this is Kingston yard and this track here, three West, this is where we stage cars that are getting put together to head to uh, the ethanol mill, which we call McGuire ethanol and so from here uh, we will take any cars bound for our local they'll all make their way back over to the ethanol mill and then they'll get uh, put together into the proper order in the yard before they get switched into all these tracks so this is a great example of how a railroad can take a local from one of its own yards directly to a large industry and do some switching what i mostly want to focus on today because it's much more complicated to do in jmri is to set up a local switcher that works just the industry. So for this, we're going to use a cement mill. Uh, it takes in a little bit less commodities than this, but it still has lots of traffic flow. All right, so what you see here is a little test bed I created in JMRI. So we don't have a lot here. We just have the cement plant, two staging yards for trains going east-west, and then a major yard. So I've created this where it's capable of running a local directly from the major yard to the cement plant. It's also capable of having through trains from the staging yards drop off cars at the cement plant. So the cement plant itself has uh, some spurs. So we have three tracks for loading cement, two tracks for unloading coal, and two tracks for unloading gravel. The types of cars they take is actually just, uh, even though I haven't said it yet, it's actually just cement hoppers and coal hoppers. I was just keeping it pretty simple this time, not going too complicated. These restrictions have it so that the only train that can pick up or set out at these spurs is the cement switcher. So I have it set to routes. So that way no other train on the layout can serve these spurs except for the train that uses the route, which is our cement switcher. One thing that I did realize by setting this up, it is extremely important. If you want to do this without schedules, you need to make sure that the cement plant or whatever large industry you're doing is its own location and you need to make sure that in that location you have the spurs and the classification tracks so let's talk about this for a second i have two storage tracks i wanted to make these yard tracks but then i realized that i can't control which trains set cars out to them and i did not want switch lists from through trains saying that they had to set out tracks to these storage tracks i wanted only the switcher to be able to use these so i had to change it over to a classification interchange track and then I put the same restrictions as I did for the spurs. So the only train that can pick up and set out is the switcher for the cement plant. And I also created a track pool. That way I can use either track up to the full, I think it was 400 or 450 feet, I think. Yeah, 400 feet, 400 feet total. Not bad. I deliberately made them not the same length. <laughs> now, uh, the next part, I have the inbound track and the outbound track. So there are restrictions here, and I'll show you that in just a second. But for example, the inbound track... This is for through trains or the local that comes up. 
they can set their cars out here on the inbound track and these are cars that are going to the cement mill so we exclude any set outs from the cement switcher because we only want the cement switcher to pick up here but by excluding just this one that makes it where any other train can set out here so if I go to show train serving this track right now these are the only trains I've programmed so the two switcher uh, jobs they can both pick up here nobody else can pick up that's exactly what we want but all the other trains can set out but our two switchers cannot and so the exact opposite is true when you look at the outbound track let's bring that over here for you so on the outbound track set outs is only by uh, the cement switcher and then pickups is literally anybody else so if I show the trains there you go two switchers they can not pick up but they can set out and so it's exactly the opposite of what we had on the other track it is extremely important I noticed if you're not going to do a schedule that you make sure that these interchange tracks are at the same location as your spurs all right the reason you want to do that I had initially started with a separate interchange location and I basically treat it like a local the switcher would pick up cars from the interchange it would drag them over to the cement plant and then drag cars back to the interchange what that does is that makes it where you don't get any car movement between these storage tracks and the spurs you might also uh, find that you want uh, like an empty car from after being unloaded with gravel to go over here and load up with cement sometimes I have seen cement mills uh, use the same car for both of these I used to work not too far from one uh, not that I'm an expert in that process but I have seen it so there is tangible proof that that happens now to best the best way to do that to run a car from one spur to another is really just to set up a schedule however in our options here uh, let's actually go to the main menu for this tools um, let's see actually I'm going to go to trains sorry trains menu so there's our five trains tools and then options right here normally I don't ever select these but since I have a large industry I do want some of this to happen I do want sometimes a rail car to go from one spur to another I do want it to go from one yard track to another track or from one CI track to another CI track that's because I have this large industry and I want cars moving to different tracks inside that same industry and this is crucial when you're modeling a bunch of small industries you don't have to worry about that and in fact you don't want that I'm not going to ship a rail car from one industry across the street to another they're either going to use forklifts or a truck something that is way faster way more efficient for that short distance or if it's like light goods they'll just have people carry it back in the day <laughs> now I am kind of representing modern stuff here so in this case uh, we are going to simulate that we have a uh, an industrial switcher here so let me get those trains out the only train that I've built so far are these two switchers uh, let me pull up their switch list and let me show you the kind of things that are possible so here we go uh, we built I think this was like 38 cars or something like that but notice quite a bit going on don't pay attention to railroad or car numbers I just threw some in there but we've got our cement hoppers are 34 feet long we've got our coal hoppers are 44 feet long notice all right we're picking up cars from a gravel unload track and we're sending them to a cement track to be loaded all right, that's exactly what I wanted it to do this is not using a schedule then we have a pickup from the inbound track it's going straight to a cement track to be loaded that's fine too uh, we have some cars from storage tracks are being sent over uh, to the cement tracks to be loaded we have some cars from uh, one cement track going to another that's something I don't want so I'll have to go back in and kind of fine-tune that to make it where that doesn't happen all right that's fine this is why we look at it so once it's loaded with cement I don't want it going back to another cement track loaded of course uh, so I, I gotta go and make some changes you can do that with spurs you can restrict whether they receive loaded or empty cars and that fixes that problem so that's an easy fix I need to do uh, and then here's another one I wanted to point out sometimes we'll pick up loaded cars like right here oh wait uh, right here so a car that gets loaded from a cement load track gets put over on the storage track so the reason that might happen on an actual industry is maybe the car is loaded for a customer but it's not being shipped out yet so we go ship it over to the storage track and then naturally since it's loaded with cement after I go and kind of fix what loads the uh, spur will allow to come in 
uh, you won't have this exact car go back uh, to a particular spur in the industry. It'll actually leave the industry. So without schedules, you can do this by making the Swisher have all the interchange tracks, all the yard tracks, and all the spurs in the same location by changing those three settings I showed you in the trains menu to allow your local moves, and then also by setting your load restrictions on your individual spurs. So I'm gonna come back with a switch list here after I make those changes to the load restrictions, and then that'll be the last thing we look at, and then we will call this video up to a close. All right, so last part here, as I was finishing up the edits to the uh, to the spurs to give their load restrictions, I did notice that since I have local spurs uh, to local spurs, those moves are allowed. There is the chance that from time to time it's going to ship a loaded car from the cement spur back to the gravel spur uh, where it only takes loads and then the process starts again. So there is only two, or there are rather, there are only two ways to fix this. Method number one is like I said earlier, go back to these spurs and make schedules. When you make schedules, you can go back and watch my video early up in this series about making schedules. Uh, that allows you to say exactly where cars need to go after they're loaded. So you could prevent a loaded car from going back to uh, the gravel spur to be unloaded because obviously we're only unloading gravel there, not cement. <laughs> Option number two, however, is to change the car type that you use to bring in gravel and to bring in cement. Uh, the one thing if you do that, you won't be able to ship uh, empty cars from the gravel track to the cement track to be loaded, which I did say earlier I was cool with. So it's, a, it's always a compromise unless you do a schedule. If you're not going to do a schedule, it's a compromise. So the way this is set up now without a schedule, it's going to have a lot of car movement, but if you were to track uh, car movements, you would notice that some of it would get a bit circular. Some cars might not leave the industry for a long time because they just keep going back and forth. And that's not prototypical, but... You also probably wouldn't notice unless you deliberately were looking for that, so it's really not a big deal unless you care about it. If you do care about it, then naturally you'd just want to make a schedule. So I'm not going to show how to make the schedule for this today, but uh, this was just a demonstration about talking about some of the important aspects in JMRI for modeling large industries. So uh, feel free to go back and watch it again if you need a brief summary of that again. But uh, yeah, very, very helpful for those of us who would like to have a few large industries that suck up a lot of cars for our layout. So thanks for joining, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I look forward to catching you guys next time. Talk to you later.